uh, and a very good morning or afternoon in Bangladesh from our side. On behalf of Farm State Academy, myself, Swati, welcomes you all to this web education session, which we have shortened to education. And this will be a short dose of satire and humor. You all have been very busy, very seriously working and everything, but we want uh, you to break from that routine and think with an open mind, laugh also. So Vivek sir has devised this session for you. And um, uh, today we are going live again after a few months, literally. Uh, well, many of us are debating uh, online and offline trainings and its outcomes and what all is happening in online trainings and how offline trainings can be done. Uh, but if you have a bird's eye view, the most important uh, thing that matters is are you transforming as per the times? Whether it's an online training or an offline training, are you transforming? Are you actually thinking who has moved your cheese? Um, has digital adoption happened in pharma? How it has happened? What has happened actually? So all this will be taken care of today uh, in this today's sessions. Well, today we have uh, none other than Vivek Hattangadi, sir, to throw some light on these questions. The craftsman that he is, I would rather take a back seat and uh, get absorbed in how he tells this uh, story and what impact this has on pharma industry. Uh, Dr. Satish, can we have the intro video, please? Before we start, I would uh, like to read aloud the disclaimer which comes along with this session. Uh, this presentation is a satire. It is not to hurt or ridicule anyone. This revocation is intended to be a constructive social criticism of some pharma marketing practices. Let's start learning now. Over to you, Vivek. Sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Swati. And I'm really delighted to see so many participants, not only from India, but even from outside India, particularly from uh, Bangladesh. And a warm welcome to you on this first summer afternoon, the beginning of spring. Today is basically in India, the first, uh, I would say, anniversary when the lockdown was first announced. Exactly a year back on Sunday, we had a Janta curfew and two days later, a three-week lockdown. And this three-week lockdown changed the face of the pharma industry. But was everybody ready for that change? There were some people who were ready, some people who were more than ready, but there were some people who were not really ready. And we'll during this entire uh, session, I'm going to take you through two stories. The first story is about who bought my cheese, and the second is on who bought the brand manager's cheese. So, with Dr. Swati, can I share the screen now? Sure, sir. We are eager to listen to you. 
Are you able to see? Yes, sir. So welcome to this uh, presentation, Who Bought the Brand Manager's Keys? It's an amazing way to deal with change in the brand managers and sales managers' work life. Now, this entire presentation is based on the book, Who Bought My Keys, written by Spencer Johnson. And I first read this book 30 years back, somewhere in 90 or 91. And I was greatly, really, uh, greatly impressed by this book. And in most of the workshops I conduct, I start with this program, Who Vote by Keys. I'm going to present my entire uh, presentation today. I'm going to organize in two parts. The first part is the story, Who Vote by Keys. This is for those friends of mine who perhaps have not read this book earlier. It's for them. And the second part is the more relevant part today. Who would my brand manager cheese? And when I'm referring to the brand manager here, it doesn't necessarily be the brand manager. It also means the field sales manager. Because field sales managers and the brand managers, they always have to work hand in hand. So the book, Who Would My Cheese by Spencer Johnson is an amazing way to deal with change in life. Once again, I'll put this disclaimer here. Who would the Brian Manager cheese? This presentation is a satire. It is not to hurt or ridicule anybody. The publication is intended to be a constructive social criticism of some of the pharma marketing practices. I hope you all understand the word satire. Satire is the use of humor or exaggeration, exaggeration to drive home a certain point on certain topics. And what that topic is, you'll come to know during the course of my presentation. So what is cheese? Cheese is a metaphor for what you want in life. Cheese in Hindi is called as paneer. In Bangla, it is called as paneera. Actually, when we talk about paneer or paneer, that refers to basic, uh, what you call a Scottish cheese. Now, what is a metaphor? A metaphor is a figure of speech in which the object isn't really what it means. For example, when you say, I have a heart of gold, or you have a heart of gold. When I say you have a heart of gold, a gold, 24 karat gold, it means that you have a very big heart, you're a very generous person, you're a very kind person, but literally it doesn't mean that you have a heart of gold. I still remember when I was in class one, my teacher told me one day, it was raining outside and it was raining heavily and my teacher said, it's raining cats and dogs. So I started looking out and where are the cats and dogs which are falling down? And then she told me that cats and dogs is a metaphor for the term heavy rainfall. So similarly, cheese is a metaphor for what you want in life. Everybody has his own kind of cheese and we pursue it to make us happy. For example, for some, the cheese could be a big bungalow on the seaside. For some, the cheese could be a Mercedes car or a BMW car. For some, it could be even spiritual peace. But the only problem with cheese is that we become attached to cheese. And when we lose it, or when it is stashed away from us, we tend to become traumatic. We tend to become traumatic. That is the strategy when we get too much attached to our cheese. So what is cheese for pharma brand manager? 
I won't answer this question immediately. I want to reserve it for some time. And later on, during the course of the discussion, you yourself will realize what is the cheese for a pharma brand manager. Now, a small poll question, and I'll give you one minute for this. And I would request Dr. Satish to put the poll. What is the cheese for a pharma brand manager? Is it joint field work? Is it preparing visual aids? Is it calling on uh, MPOs and uh, MRs and first line managers on phone every day in the morning? Or they're sitting with the designers. Yes, there are some brand managers who sit with the designers and they direct them how to prepare a visual aid. They even tell people from NID Ahmedabad or the, from JJ School of Art, no, this is how the design has to be done. So what is the cheese for our pharma brand managers. So in 60 seconds, can we all answer this on the chat box? No, not, a, sorry, not, a, not on the chat box, on the- uh, On the poll screen basically. On the poll itself, yeah. Yes, uh, we can see 69, 70, yeah, it's increasing very fast. Come on, put your uh, opinion. What do you think? Yeah, come oh. on. We'll take some more time. Let everyone uh, respond. Yeah, come on. Uh, Great. So we crossed 100. Yes, put your opinion. What do you think? Uh, what is the cheese for a pharma brand manager in India? Yes. I'm specifically Great. referring to India here. I'm not ex including Bangladesh here for another reason, which I'll tell you later. Yeah, come on. Uh, Still, we have many people to respond. percent have voted, right. It's a very right. small question, <laughs> but the value is very... <laughs> yes, more. Okay. Great, great. One, uh, one so answer has come all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 139. So let us wait for 150 and then we can stop the poll. Uh, still five, six votes. Let's make it 150 votes and then we will stop the poll. Yes, few more. The trend is very, Great. very clear. And yeah. for most of us, Great. If two more. Cheese is field work. The can we have two more? If someone else can just respond. Uh, yeah, one more. Yes, now we are at 150. So, uh, so I'm ending the poll and I'll just share the results. So, is it visible to everyone? Yeah, field work 53%, uh, preparing visual aids 23%, calling on MRs and first line measures on phone every day, 15%. And sitting with the designers, 0%. I'm very happy to see that. I'm very, very happy to see that. Uh, sitting with designers is 9%, sir. There are 13. Oh, sorry, 9%. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. thank you very much. Sounds and we'll see a little later whether what I have in mind and the outcome of this fall, they are in sync. Thank you very much. Can we put away the poll now? Yes, the poll has been ended. And if you are seeing the screen of poll, you can just cross it and uh, it will disappear on your screen. Yeah. So coming back to the story of who moved by cheese. Once there lived four characters who ran through a maze looking for cheese to nourish them. And when they had the cheese, it made them very happy. Now, who were those little people? They were the mice and the little people. Two were named Sniff and Scurry. 
and the two little people, they were about the same size of the mice. And they were called, they were named as Hem and Haw. Now, why the names Snip and Scurry and Hem and Haw? It was really imaginative of the author, Spencer Johnson, to uh, give these names to those four characters. And in a little while, I'll tell you what these names stand for. When we talk about sniff, sniffing means finding something new, getting more information. And that sniffing and information is something like being uh, proactive. People who sniff, they show their curiosity. And that curiosity is something which is very, very, very important for anybody in the pharma marketing, whether it's a brand manager or whether it's a field manager. Scurry means move hurriedly with short, quick steps. Move hurriedly with short, quick steps. For example, you see a police dog here. What is that police dog doing? He's sniffing, he's searching, he's finding out new information. He's finding if there are drugs in the bag. And what are the policemen doing after this? They scurry after this police dog. So I hope I've been able to clear why these names Sniff and Scurry. Hem and Haw. There's a phrase in English which means hemming, uh, sorry, which says hemming and hawing. Hemming and hawing, what does that phrase stand for? It stands for a person who is indecisive, is unable to take decision. He's uncertain about himself. And he may even take a very, very, very long time to decide to do something. And therefore, these two characters, they were named as Hem and Haw. Now, Haw, he had a habit. Anything which came to his mind, he is to write on the wall. And the first one writing which he saw, on the, which he wrote on the wall, Having cheese makes you happy. Having cheese makes you happy, which means having something what you were looking for makes you happy. And it makes you so happy that you get attached to it and you don't want to leave it. You now enter into a comfort zone. The cheese has made you happy and you now enter into the comfort zone. What was the daily routine of these four characters? Every morning, dressed into their running gear, they headed to tea station C, where they found their own kind of teas. It was a large store of teas. And every day, the tea station C used to get filled up. Now, who was putting the cheese? Nobody knew, neither hem or haw, nor slip and curry. But yes, every day the cheese station was filled with cheese. Hem and haw, they were very happy. But slip and scurry, the little boys, they used to think, will this cheese last forever? Will someone who's putting the cheese here, will you keep on putting it forever? And if it doesn't do that, what will happen? So the thinking of the little people and the thinking of these mice was totally different. And as anticipated, one morning, Sniff and Scurry, they arrive at tea station C and they discover there is no cheese. And they discover that there is no cheese. But Sniff and Scurry are not surprised. Long back, they had anticipated that one day or the other, the supply of cheese would stop. So they quickly run in search of new cheese. They quickly run in search of new cheese. Later during the day, Hem and Haw also arrived. Hem and Haw, they were caught by surprise. What? 
no cheese and hem shouted who moved my cheese is not fair and they were mentally upset they developed mental trauma and they did not know what to do poor hem and ha the whole day they sat there brooding there's no cheese what should i do there's no cheese what should i do they went home hungry that night hungry and discouraged but before they left ha wrote on the wall the more important your cheese is to you the more you want to hold on to it which means when you start liking and when you get attached to something releasing it becomes traumatic and that is one of the reasons many people are reluctant to change they get into the zone of comfort and when they are into the zone of comfort they do not think of going into the fear zone or to the zone of learning they want to hold on to the zone of comfort and that is why is why more and more people holding on to this kind of cheese day and night hem and haw analyze the situation this continued for days together they were analyzing the situation where had the cheese gone where has the cheese gone i want my cheese and one day he ho was paralyzed after so much of analysis 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 he was in a state of paralysis and paralysis and paralysis and that is said he told him i think we should stop analyzing the situation so much and just get into and find new cheese let's run into the maze and find new cheese but him him he was very adamant no i want my old cheese back i want my old cheese back this continued for some time and ha was frustrated and one day he decides to leave cheese station c and he starts running down the maze and while he's running down the maze he begins to smile why has he started smiling because he was now discovering that he was discovering what nourished his soul now what is it that nourished his soul he was letting the old cheese go he was letting the old cheese go he was letting the old baggage go to surprise horse that he to enjoy himself more and more and he stopped again to write on the wall the quicker you let go of old cheese the sooner you will find new cheese so don't let that old cheese become a burden on your back throw it as soon as possible dump it as soon as possible the quicker you get uh, rid of the old cheese you will be able to adapt changes faster what does cliff and scurry do they were running through the maze to find new cheese and they went further into the maze into the maze and they finally landed up at steez station n and they found what they had been looking for a great supply of new cheese it was the biggest store of cheese the mice had ever seen very happy but they also said i do not know we do not know how long this cheese is going to last but we must be ready and alert to find new cheese ha was searching for them and eventually he met them sniff fed scurry welcomed ha and they were now all very happy with the new cheese with the found and they decided that we will let go the old cheese off as early as possible 
do people like Smith, Scurry, Hem, and all exist in real life? You soon know about it. The handwriting on the wall was very clear. Change happens. Anticipate change, monitor change, adopt to change quickly, change, enjoy your job, be ready to change quickly again, and enjoy it again and again and again. Please don't mistake me here when I say change and enjoy your job. It doesn't mean and it should not be misinterpreted as change the company where you're working for because I've seen the attrition rate of the brand managers in India is as high as 60%. If the attrition rate of the brand managers in the pharmaceutical industry is 16%, we are not really in a position to build strong brands because you require dedicated people to build a brand and who can build brands year after year. Have you heard about a product called Zincovit from a company called Apex Pharma? In Apex Pharma, what is the reason for the success of Zincovit? Apart from all the marketing strategies and the tactics for the last 25 to 30 years, the same person, the same brand manager, who is now, of course, in a much higher position, he is handling that brand independently. So when I say change, I don't mean to say keep on changing your jobs. Don't misinterpret me. And now we come to the city of Vatopia. Have you heard about Vatopia? Vatopia is from the word utopia. Utopia was a book which was written by Thomas More somewhere in the in between 15th and uh, 16th century. What is utopia? Utopia is from the Greek word autopus. Autopus in the Greek language means no place. And there is no such place called utopia. And in this book, Utopia by Thomas More, he writes that utopia is a place, a perfect place to stay, a perfect city to place where everything is perfect. And this, of course, is an imaginary place. Similarly, we have the city of Vatopia. And Vatopia is also, again, an imaginary city. And in the city of Vatopia, there are four characters. One character is by the name Viju Lal. The second character has the name Aids Bhai. The third character has the name Fiji. And the fourth character has the name Tal. T A L Tal and not Ta. Who are those four characters I discuss with you eventually? Visulal and Aids Bhai, they are brand managers. They are working for a company in Vatopia. Vatopia Pharmaceuticals is one of the leading companies in Vatopia. It is ranking at number three. Every day in the morning, Visulal and Aids Bhai they go to the office and what is the job they perceive? What was the job of the brand manager perceived by them? The only job they had was to prepare visual aids. And they said, the more visual aids we prepare, the more visual aids we churn out. It's going to help Metopia pharmaceuticals. And they kept on churning visual aid after visual aid. They made visual aids for the detail men to promote the Vatopian products to the healing men. 
And when I'm referring to the detailed men, I'm talking about the MPOs and the medical reps. And I'm talking about the healing men, I'm referring to the doctors, the physicians, and the HCPs. Just as how you used to write on the wall, here, Visula also had the habit of writing on the wall. And one of the first writings on the wall, preparing visual aids makes a brand manager happy. And 34% of the people have already agreed to this in the poll which we had taken some time back. Preparing visual aids makes a brand manager happy. Month after month, year after year, Visulal and HY, they keep on preparing visual aids. And sometimes occasionally for a day or two, especially at the end of a cycle meeting or a briefing meeting, they used to go and meet the doctors for one or two days in a month. And with the new visual aids for a day or two, there was a flow of prescriptions, but again, it stopped. And that prompted Bissunal to write on the wall. The visual aid is the only tool to get prescriptions. The visual aid is the only tool to get prescriptions. Life went on merrily. Visual aids of the visual aids were churned out by Bissunal and aids by. And my God, they were really, very, very really happy and they were very much attached to the cheese and the cheese was the visual aids. They were so keen on producing more and more visual aids and they found that the place where they are staying, they had to commute every day for four hours. So they decided to take up a house which is very near their office. And this new house which they took up was hardly a minute's distance from the office. And now they said, we have cut down on our commuting time for by four hours. And we can use these four hours to produce more and more visual aids. And they were very, very, very happy. In the year 2010, what happened? Quince, Fiji, and Dal were born. In the year 2010, the twins Fiji and Dal were born. As I said, like in Utopia, even in Vatopia, everything was ideal. And there was no distinction between the marmoset monkeys and the human beings. For those who do not know much about the marmoset monkeys, they are considered to be the most intelligent of the species amongst the monkeys. And I can assure you, their intelligence is far superior than mine, far superior than Viveka Tangri. I can give it in writing on a stamp paper. Bisulal and aids by they were the neighbors. And as they grew up, they saw Bisulal and aids by doing the job of churning out visual aids. And then they decide that we too want to become brand managers. They do their PGDPM from Vatopian Institute of Management in a city which is called as Vatopabad. They study there for two years, they get a degree in PGDM, and fortunately, they land up as brand managers in Vatopia Pharmaceuticals. So Fiji and Tull, they join Bisulal and HY in churning out new visual aids. Every morning they go to office to churn out more and more visual aids. And 
Visulal once again wrote on the wall, making visual aid is play and fun for all of us. And we get so, we get paid so well for that. Poll number two. For how many days should a brand manager who wants to become a CEO, mark my words, how many days should a brand manager who becomes, who wants to become a CEO, should he work in the field? Five days, two days, or more than 15 days? And Dr. Satish, can you open this poll? Yes, the poll is live. Yes. I would like to have a bit of participation this time. Everyone can vote now. Yeah, everybody can vote. Come on. Simple question, simple answers. Good, 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 good. 143, yes. So we have 259 uh, participants, 260 now. So we're expecting at least 200 polls. Come Great. fast, fast. Yes. Whatever comes to your mind, whatever is at the top of the mind, you can uh, write down. One sixty six seven. Once we have two hundred, we will close the poll and then yeah, display yeah, the results. Yeah. Yeah. yeah One seventy six. Great. The trend now, is very very clear. One seventy nine. Great, the trend is very, very clear. The election trend is very, very clear. <laughs> 180. Okay, great, great, more. Great. If we can have a few more votes, or at two minutes, we can just stop. Even if we don't. Yeah, we can stop at two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, four seconds more. Yes. Okay, so we have one, uh, 85 votes. So I'm ending the polling now and uh, we should display the results. Next time, Dr. Sir, if you should remember, for people who are not polled, we should also have a nota here. <laughs> nota, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, uh, is the result visible? To yeah, the results are visible. And okay. I think 49% of the people, they have said uh, more than 15 days in the field. And at least for me, this is very, very heartening. And this is also in sync with the thinking of the young brand managers, Fiji and Turk. So just like Visulal and uh, Aids by who were working in the field, and since they graduated from VIM. They remembered what the professor had told them about a company from India called Hindustan Unilever. And used to tell them that in a company like Hindustan Unilever, people were taken from I am Ahmedabad, they were taken from I am Bangalore, they were taken from I am Calcutta, but all of them were made to work for two years in the field, in the dusty villages of UP, in the cold, wintry uh, villages of Jammu and Kashmir. Some had to work even in Churu where the temperatures in summer go up to 50 degrees and they were not given any of the comforts which are available to the top executives. They had to work like ordinary salesmen in the field. And therefore, they decided to work for 15 days in the field. And during this 15 days of field work, they got a lot of insights. They got a lot of insights. And what was one of the most important insights they got? They sense there is something amiss 
with the visual aids. There is something amiss with the visual aid. There's something wrong with the visual aid because they were finding that the doctors are not very receptive towards visual aid as they were a few years back. Fiji and tell the sense that something is amiss and we must discuss with our seniors, Vijulal and HY. So they discussed this problem with Vijulal and HY and shared their feelings with them. They expected Vijulal and HY to listen to them and say something. But what came from age by was well, something surprising. He shouted at them, shut up! You are just little monkeys who were born yesterday and you do not know anything. For the last so many years, we have been producing vigilant and you suddenly come up from a school called BIM and you say that there is something amiss with vigilance. Shut up! They, two boys, Fiji and Tull, they get discouraged. They don't know what to do. But fortunately for Fiji and Tull, came Monday, 23rd March, and the coronavirus had invaded even Vatopia. Just like in India, there was a lockdown in Vatopia from the next day. Some of the detail men, they went into the field, even Viju and Tull, they went into the field, even Vizulal and uh, AIDS by they went to the field and a cranky old healing man, he said, don't show me the visual aid again, tell the brand name and get out. They were disappointed. I think an old Buddha doctor So they went to more doctors. And more and more doctors are saying, don't show me the visual aid again. Tell the brand name and get lost. And more and more doctors were getting angry. Get lost. Dump that visual aid in the sea. Fiji and Tull realize that the days of the visual aids are over. And instead of brooding over what has happened, they immediately start looking for something new. They scratch their heads, they visit the various search engines, they tap on Google, they tap on Bing, they scratch their heads, Sometimes they were so deeply engrossed in thinking that they even forget to eat their meals and they were content with bananas and fruits. And they were working very, very deeply to find out something new for the healing men. And one day when they were having their bath, suddenly, Something went to the head. They came out naked out of this bottom, ran onto the road and said, Eureka, 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 we have found it. We have found it. We have found a substitute for the visual aids. What is that? They have found a big store of what you call as digital marketing tools. For example, through Microsoft Teams and through Zoom, they could connect with the doctors for doing CMEs. They could even connect with their field people, their field colleagues. They could have cycle meetings virtually on Zoom. Then they found about the chatbot. Chatbot, they realized is so important for e-detailing. And what is that e-detailing? Making the doctor listen to the detailing at a time and place which is convenient to him. Then they realized about Facebook and LinkedIn and Facebook 
my god they had facebook live you have facebook pages there were so many varieties available in facebook itself and then they discovered the variables the variables were there which could track the patient and help the doctor there was a gadget which is called as dose strap and this dose strap which helped the patients in adhering to therapy but the thing which fascinated them the most was patient centricity in marketing the thing which fascinated them the most was patient centricity in marketing in the meanwhile vijulal and aids bhai were wondering what has happened and where are fiji and tal so vijulal asks uh, aids bhai shall we look for something new that's nonsense that's blasphemy only vigilates can work i want my vigilate back and vijulal became desperate he was frustrated as aids by his accept on shouting i want my vigilate back and he forced vijulal to write on the wall doctors are not the healing men are not listening to us therefore we should give them better visual aids remember visual aids that nourish the minds of the healing men and the detailing men they were stuck up with the old idea of the visual aids by now visual was totally frustrated i shall go and find out something new and let us see what fiji and tell are doing and he wrote on the wall now healing men will certainly welcome the detailing men again healing men will certainly welcome the detailing men again only if detail men can add value to the call or if they can help the patients healing men will certainly welcome detail men again only if the detail men can add value to the call or offer something new to the patients and they search he goes on searching for fiji and tell and he wonders where could they be and he joins and he starts searching for them for a couple of days and he finally finds them in this new tea station that we discussed about all the gadgets which were available there Vijulal was particularly fascinated by one gadget where it was written morning afternoon evening night it was a truck or dose stack what's this dose stack and tell answer it's a real time tracking iot device which is made in india it helps the patients adhere to their medication regimen remember it's made in india and it's not made in china they are made by some very young entrepreneurs oh my god and then it struck to vijulal he had read in a report of cape gemini some time back that the adherence to chronic therapy and sometimes even acute therapy is very very low for example in grd patients 54% of the patients they do not adhere to therapy in arthritis 57% in parkinson's disease 60% in cardiac problems 61% and even at a dangerous disease like cancer the adherence rate is just around 40% and then he starts thinking and he discusses this is problem in the meantime he keeps wondering why did it not occur to me why did it not occur to me that this is the kind of poor adherence to drug therapy 
And when he read that Cape Gemini report once again, he found that the annual loss of revenues for a pharmaceutical company globally because of non-adherence to therapy is as high as 30 billion dollars is as high as 30 billion US dollars. My God, that is the loss of revenue only because of non-adherence to therapy. And then he suddenly recalled the Indian pharmaceutical revenues are about 20 billion. And he remembered somebody was calling India the pharmacy of the world. And the pharmacy of the world that the uh, revenue is around 20 billion. How much could be the loss of revenue for a pharmaceutical company? Every week, every month, month after month, on the day of the closing, there is always a maramari. Target Q no wa. Big boss as chota boss, chota boss as the chota uh, medical authority. Target Q ne pura. Target Q ne pura wa. But nobody in India has ever thought that just by having a patient centricity activity revolving around patient adherence, the sales can go up 100% month after month. They don't have to send doctors or the healing men to Switzerland or Kashmir. They don't have to take them to Sun Star Hotels. Just help the patients and help the healing men in adhering the patients to therapy. As a result, the outcome is better and because of better outcome, the doctor is happy and the doctor gets more patients. Visulal went to reason with AIDS Bhai. AIDS Bhai, where are you? AIDS Bhai, where are you? He linked into the he saw he went to the room everywhere, but he wasn't able to see AIDS Bhai anywhere. Eventually, he found that somebody was trying to open the room. And here he was, a dinosaur. And the dinosaur was struggling to come out. And the dinosaur was saying something which Visulal heard as, who moved my visual aid? Who moved my visual aid? I want my visual aid back. I want my visual aid back. I want my visual aid back. And Visulal found that AIDS by is no more. He has been converted into a dinosaur. And he said, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The end of AIDS by. Visula recalled the Jurassic Park, the movie the Jurassic Park he had seen some time back. And he said to himself, I don't want to be extinct. I do not want to be extinct. He wrote on the wall, the visual aid is extinct. And as a brand manager, I do not want to become extinct. And I want to do something new, find out something new. Remember, if you are not digital, if you are not digital, you soon become a dinosaur. Now, Fiji and Dull. They accelerate their activities and they are now focusing on patient centricity. Now I'd like to ask you a question. Do characters like Fiji, Tull, Disulal, Aids by, Sniff, Scurry, Haw, and Hem, do they really exist in real life? And I can watch there is at least one person who was like Disulal. Till March 20th, 21st, 2020, this person whom you see here, he had a very, very, very low DQ. And this idiot, you'll be surprised to know that idiot, he did not even know that it is possible to make slide presentations on Zoom. That was his level of DQ. That was his level of digital intelligence. 
but fortunately he met his fiji and dull they are my fiji and dull and he learned this lot learned a lot from this real life fiji and dull these are the fiji dull and visulals in real life in a country called india visulal fiji and dull they now join hands and they focus on a new marketing model that is patient centricity they are very very active here they are all attending the south and southeast asia e summit on patient centric marketing which is on sunday 11th april 2021 at 11 am if you want to be the 21st century marketer please do register for the south and southeast asia e summit on patient centricity this is the event website page and if you want more details you can write to dull dull who heads pharma state academy thank you very much over to dr swadhi now uh, thank you vivek sir and that was a humorous story hats off to your creativity the way you present a story and uh, drive the point in such a subtle way and uh, one thing is for sure you are not visual you are now the fiji <laughs> hal so, <laughs> so uh, wonderfully told um, a story which uh, everyone should give, give heed to in this um, uh, digital times we all are talking how to go digital what to do in digital arena but uh, the the physical presence of uh, field force um, is not to be taken uh, you know in a uh, lighter mood it has to be there but yes you have to be smart you have to be very innovative and very creative with whatever you do you can even combine the offline and online ways of uh, connecting with the doctor or a patient so since sir has um, uh, introduced uh, you to the patient centricity summit uh let me give a brief about this summit also and uh, uh, after a few minutes so first of all let us take a few questions if uh, we have right vivek sir yeah sure but 10 minutes will have question and answers if there are yeah sure so yeah, anyone so, so, yes now you are unmuted so you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the questions to vivek sir directly interact with sir <laughs> Uh, just unmute yourself tell your name and then you can ask the question yeah please uh, sir this is alan gonzalez here sir yes sir how are you talukdar alan yes, alan you. sir yeah. yeah alan mr alan oh your alan go yeah self it uh it was a really wonderful session sir but uh, i just want to look on the other side of the coin uh, currently there is a very small minority of companies who have the financial clout to go digital and spend a lot of money on these type of sessions we still have a huge chunk of pharma some pharma companies which are mushrooming smaller i mean i'm talking about the org ranking of 100 and above that i mean below below 100 what would you suggest to such companies who maybe have a financial crunch as far as uh, going into a digital marketing in a big way how can they solve their problems Yes, that's a very pertinent question you have asked, Alan. And if you just wait for a couple of days more, you'll get the answer to this on 11th April, because one of the speakers is going to exactly, precisely address this topic. And I want to answer that question now because I don't want to preempt 11th Sunday. But this is a topic which is very pertinent. which makes a lot of sense and therefore i am not going to talk about what the pharma companies can do 
we are basically whether in india or in bangladesh we are basically into branded generics and so far it's true what you said that uh, patient centric activities happen only in the multinational companies and companies which have originated that drug but there are ways and means where even the smaller companies people who are not research based companies they can enter into uh digital marketing patient centric activities but please hold on till 11th april yes sir. thank you thank you sir thank you uh, sir before anyone else, else is going to ask a question i have a question sure, on that sir. Uh, particular uh, brand managers doing 15 days of field work when when you were talking about that topic a lot of comments were going in the chat box and uh, there were very varied comments you know uh there was uh, there were comments like uh, uh, 15 days are too like too demanding too more uh, to ask from a brand manager because there are other works to be done and of course everyone uh, was agreeing like 5 days to hona nahi chahiye it should be more than that but 15 days few so what are your comments on that is then 15 days too much to ask from a brand manager because they are having a lot of other works also to do a lot of analytics and all other things to do in the month so what uh, what are your uh, views absolutely and i agree to what my young friends say but i only tell i only tell people i don't just give an advice i have done it and therefore i tell people even as the head of sales and marketing of one of the top uh, pharmaceutical companies heading two divisions i used to work for 15 days in a month in the field how many days at the top level handling two divisions of a top company i used to work for 15 days in the field and when i was in active uh, employee in pharmaceutical companies we did not have so much of access to laptop and internet internet speeds were very low and today if i was holding the same position i would rather work for 3 weeks when you talk about analytics your mobile is a analytical laboratory itself your laptop your ipads and uh, uh, tabs they're all every you can carry the small f office any very what provided you have that will if i at that level i have worked in the field for 15 days in a month and that too at the age of 53 and 54 my young friends here are hardly in the 30s and today they are almost less maybe half my age they should have that energy to work in the field of course if you don't work in the field you will never get insights and it's only fiji and tell who were working the field for 15 days in the month they could sense that something is amiss with the visual aids that's my submission let me assure you again whatever i say in any of my talks or any of my workshops i don't say anything which i have not done or which cannot be done even at the age of 71 till the pre covid age i still remember my last working was for a client of mine and the places i visited was places called ganj posada vidisha bhopal and sagar as a non employee of the company as an external consultant because when that were i strategize for a company i make sure that i know the field stuff and i know the uh, doctors the customer list of the doctor without that you cannot form a strategy if at the age of 71 you can work in the field at even remote places well you are too young right sir thank you sir yeah thank yes you, sir and i'll also share with you 
that I've also worked in places like Dhaka, I've worked in places like Dar es Salaam. I have worked the interiors of Dar es Salaam. So field work, we should not be averse to. Just remember about what I said about Hindustan Unilever a little back, a little while back. I am graduates from Calcutta, Ahmedabad. They are not allowed to work in the corporate office till they complete their tenure of three years working in the remote villages of Churu and UP and Kerala or maybe even uh, uh, Orissa. And one of the reasons why uh, HUL is called at the CEO factory. That's the very reason I call it a CEO factory. And again, if you recall the poll which I had put in, the poll which I had put in, I had clearly mentioned a person who wants to become a CEO, how many days should you work in the field? If you recall that uh, poll, a person, a brand manager who wants to become a CEO, for how many days should you work in the field? I'm not talking about people who are not ambitious. Sorry for being a bit blunt. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Because that uh, subject is very, very close in my heart. And Dr. Satish, I would like to share one more thing that in most of the uh, workshops I run, on the first day, I become the most unpopular man because I insisted that 15 days in the field is a must. Yes, right, sir. So I'm not really a very popular Good person. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. This side, Baskar. Yes, Baskar, tell me. Sir, I'm having a question uh, regarding patient-centric approach. Yeah. Actually, you rightly pointed out nowadays patient-centric approach is doing predominantly by yeah, MNCs sir. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, my yeah, voice yeah. is audible. Yeah, yeah, you're audible, Oscar. Uh, predominantly, they were uh, focusing on chronic segment yeah. uh, th therapies as well as MNCs. But my question is, sir, can we connect digitally to patient in semi-acute? Because I can't say acute. Semi-acute, like uh, the treatment duration is three months to six months. In that patient uh, centric, we can, can we can a brand manager or a, this one therapy can connect, and how we can connect, sir? In fact, uh, I would go one step forward and say, not just uh, semi-chronic, but even in acute. Like for example, I forget the name of the program which uh, MSD has, and it talks about patient centricity for antibiotic use. One of the reasons why. Uh, there is so much of uh, drug resistance, multi-drug uh, resistance to antibiotics is because the patients do not adhere to therapy. The moment you, they take an antibiotic for two or three days, the patient feels better and it stops taking the drug. Or there is a grandmother at home who says, Bete, ye dawai se bhot garmi hoti hai. Ha, doctor bhot padalika hai. Lekin maine jara din dike hai. I've seen more summers than him. So, doctor, if you say that it should be three times in a day, it should be two times in So, there are such advices which come from the caregivers. So, it's not just in chronic therapy or even semi-chronic therapy. You can even have patient centricity for short-term doses like for uh, antibiotic. There's a program which is run by USA, uh, MSD USA. I don't I forget uh, the sir, name. Is, and I'll is, come back to you very shortly on that. Sir, it is Antibiotic Steward Program. Mr. Pankaj Srivastava has. Uh, oh, very good. Very good. Yes. Pankaj, can you tell us a little more about this program? Pankaj, can you come to the forum and tell us a little more about this program? Sir, uh, this program uh, was actually initiated uh, by one product manager. Uh, Mr. Atul Sharma that time okay. and uh, the whole idea was that uh, you know they were going and uh, collating the data of various hospitals right and what type of infection was most prevalent 
and which antibiotic was uh, most ideal for them. And based on that, they were working out, uh, you know, what type of antibiotics they should uh, actually, you know, use uh, mostly, which will cover up, uh, you know, uh, most of the infection. So it was something on the similar lines, uh, what they were doing. That is what I remember. And uh, this was very successful because most of the hospitals, uh, they were able to analyze uh, what was the most prevalent infection uh, in those hospitals. So the, uh, these uh, therapeutic, uh, these, these, uh, these doctors, they were going, they were sitting with the, uh, with the intensivist, uh, the, the entire data they were collating. And that was very specific to that hospital. So they were not promoting antibiotic just like that. They were saying, look, if suppose you have got this, uh, say, gram-positive uh, gram infection, mostly prevalent in this particular ward, like, for instance, in burns, mostly gram-positive infections, that's prevalent. And, uh, you know, methicillin-resistant methyl 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 uh, staph aureus was very common over there. So then they were saying that, look, if you take this particular drug, then that's going to be very helpful in this. So it was uh, pertaining to that. I mean, that is how, uh, what I remember, they were doing it. Thank you very much for your inputs, uh, Pankaj. And I hope I have been able to satisfy, you have been able to satisfy the query which was raised by uh, Bhaskar. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, it was nice hearing you. Uh, this is Sonalia. Sonalia, yes, sir, from Ahmedabad. Yes, I am the Bas uh, Thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, so currently, I am into biologics uh, market. Uh, we very often and we very commonly look at patient-centric programs. Yeah. But then prior to uh, the, the organization which I am working right now, earlier mm -hmm. I had worked in mass market. Oh, now, yeah. we all know the Indian uh, pharmaceuticals, sir. Working for a patient takes a little long in terms of getting the results delivered. Now, being in Indian market, everybody looks at the quick results. So how should we as a brand manager ensure that this patient-centric approach gets uh, implemented in the current mass markets or current pharma generic markets? Uh, so I, I want some ideas and some, some thoughts of yours through which we can actually implement it. It's a very, very, very important question which has been raised by Sona. And it's true that in the, the pharmaceutical industry, people are looking at quick overnight results. People are not allowed to, I mean, people do not have the patience to wait. Unless the mindset of the CEO, unless the mindset of the entrepreneurs, unless the mindset of the C-suite, it changes. Nothing is going to percolate down. Even if there are a hundred Sudarshas who want patient centricity to be introduced in the company, but if the CEO, if the entrepreneur, if the C-suite, they are more like our AIDS Y or they are more like our uh, hems, that is difficult. So that is why we have a very tremendous task of changing the mindsets of the C-spit. And that is why we in Pharma State have launched what is called as the patient-centric woman. And Dr. Swati in a little while will tell you more about this patient-centric woman. Over to Dr. Swati. So uh, I think uh, most of the questions are going to come on patient centricity uh, theme only. So um, give me a moment to tell you about the upcoming patient centricity summit that Farm State Academy is organizing. And a variety of topics, variety of questions and answers would be there. And the views of uh, top speakers from India, Bangladesh, Philippines, and uh, Singapore would be there. I'm sharing my screen to show you um, what is going to be. 
there for you at the summit. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes. Right. So registrations are free since we want this learning uh, to happen and change to happen uh, freely. We have kept this event a completely free academic and non-commercial event. It's a Pharma Brand Manager South and Southeast Asia Summit 2021. And the theme is patient centric marketing. You can register through this page. Let me quickly lead you to the speakers who would be speaking on this forum. The keynote speaker would be Jill Dona. She is from i for Pharma and she also is a, uh, uh, a leading co-founder of Accelerate, a program in uh, Canada that she runs. Then we would have Mr. Sanjeev Navangul. He would be sharing with us experiences in diabetes and hep C, how patient centricity helps build brands. Here you are going to get a lot of ideas. We would be having Dr. Muhammad Mujahidul Islam. He would be talking on how pharma companies can help create delight at every stage of the patient journey. So your uh, you know, questions which are very granular would be answered in this patient centricity summit. We would be having uh, Mr. Ashok Bhattacharya, ex Takeda. How can mid sized and non research based companies implement? This was the question I think that was asked by Yeah, Mr. asked Alan. by Haskar. Haskar exactly the same question. Yeah. Alan, I think. Yeah, yes. Yeah, How can mid sized and non research based companies implement patient centric marketing? Then we would be welcoming Mr. Milan Palager from Singapore. How new product development can address patients' needs? We would be having. Mr. Sunil Attawar, who is, I think, uh, currently with us also. Welcome, sir. And he would be talking on patient centricity, listening matters. We will be having a talk on how the mitigation of sufferings caused by side effects of drugs prove to be a pivotal point for patient-centric marketing by pharma companies. This is an opportunity area. Mr. Edmund Yang from Philippines would be joining us. We would be welcoming then Mr. Venu Gopal Vijayendran, sir, President in Task, evolving role of pharma field force as service provider to patients. So you will see a lot of uh, patients stuff here. We would be having the, the most important patient, Vivek Hatankari, sir. He will be playing the role of a patient. He will be telling us about the patient journey on that day. Registration is free and it is there at uh, our website. You can directly register your you can ask your teams to register and um, be with us on 11th april starting at 11 a.m indian standard time uh, satish can we have the video of the uh, event also sure sure give me a second I hope this um, uh, event answers all your queries. It will be a, a, a partly long, part, partially long event. Uh, uh, please take out at least four hours from your schedules to attend. Uh, I think Dr. Swati, it will go to uh, up to six hours. So from 11 to maybe six, and as happened last time in World Pharma Brand Managers Day, I'm expecting to, like it will be 7, 7.30 because a lot of interaction will be. Yeah, there will be a lot of interactions. We will have many countries participating and we will also be sharing with you a survey result 
The survey has been conducted um, uh, by Pharmacist Academy uh, in collaboration with Jamia Hamdard University in, De uh, in India and um, uh, our colleagues in uh, different countries. And this survey will tell you the results of uh, how, what are the opportunity areas uh, coming out from the mouths of doctors in patient centricity and from patients in patient centricity. So we have two survey results to show you that day related to what doctors are thinking about patient centricity and what patients are saying, okay, what pharma companies can do about us. So do register there. Um, uh, the website is Pharmastate Academy, search at Google and you can register directly from there. Right, uh, any more questions or interactions? Yes, I have a question. Sure, please. Thank please you. Yes, uh, yeah, Arindam here. Ainal Haq, okay. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Arindam, Arindam. Arindam from Barana. Yeah, Arindam. Okay, Arindam. How are you, Arindam? Uh, fine, sir. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hi, welcome, welcome, Haru. Sir, that's a take home point, but I have gone through your uh, very, very exciting presentation, sir. The take home point for me that uh, you have to explore the adventure and taste the new cheese. Otherwise, you have to just to smell the odd and rotten cheese always. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that, sir, uh, just I have a question that uh, uh, when the brand managers, in what you are saying, that they should ask to go to field 15 days or more than that in a month. <laughs> don't, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't you think that equally there should be? Uh, much more physically skilled to connect and clarity in their communication to establish the purpose of the market. That is the main question. And uh, for your information, uh, Arindam, only yesterday and possibly today, the last day, we have a course. Uh, what is the role of a brand manager when he goes into the field? Very important for the brand manager's note is that. He cannot any time replicate the role of a field sales manager. He has to have a totally different role which is independent of sales management. He cannot replicate as a field sales manager when he goes in for joint field working. And my submission to you all of you is that today is the last day when the course will be free. And from tomorrow, I think, I don't know what is the price Dr. Sati has kept. <laughs> so it is free today. That is the point. Please, uh, please uh, go through the <laughs> course. It is available at Pharma State Academy for free. Um, and uh, uh, that, that will answer the question. Itself. And also, since we are all talking about how, how do we go digital, uh, Pharma State Academy is coming up with a two-hour workshop on 4th April. And uh, we all are saying why and how should pharma go digital. So we are going to give you a complete toolkit of how you can do this. Uh, you can enroll your uh, uh, colleagues, your uh, teams here. And uh, this will basically be uh, answering the question, why should we go digital and how should we go digital? So we will have Vivek sir telling you the strategies which you could uh, um, uh, use to go digital. And then we will have a very uh, uh, good digital marketing uh, expert who will tell you that whichever digital modes you are using, whether it be Facebook, your website, your micro websites, whatever you are using, what you can do with the analytics, how you can make it more useful to your company. So it will be a workshop plus a strategy session. Uh, we will let you know the details very soon. It will be put up at Pharma State Academy and we will circulate through mails also. So join us in that workshop. It won't be a costly affair. It is, uh, but it is going to give you a very good hint at what you need to do and what you are actually doing very superficially, which has to be done very deeply. Digital marketing is not like you're just creating a Facebook page and uh, going live and uh, putting up a few uh, images and uh, 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 that is all. You have to have each post analyzed and how that analysis should happen. How should it be converted to a digital, uh, sorry, physical visit to a doctor? That is where the cheese lies. So uh, we'll let you know about the details of this particular uh, toolbox session workshop also. Is any more questions? 
let's interact. We have a lot of friends from Bangladesh. Yeah, welcome, Salil. Salil Kadalpur. So happy to see you. My pleasure, sir. It, it was wonderful to the you. The digital see guru, the digital guru of the pharmaceutical industry. Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> But thank you very much for saying so. <laughs> welcome, Salil, sir. Nice to see you here. Hello, Dr. Swati. Nice to meet you. Right, and we have a lot of friends from Bangladesh also. Thank you all uh, uh, that you have joined and uh, interacted with Vivek sir. More interactions uh, could be done. We have five more minutes. Yes, we could not see any more questions It's from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Yeah. Yes. So if, yeah. There are few clicks from Pakistan also. I think. Yes. Oh. Gonna, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. 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 Anyone from Bangladesh would like to ask any question, or suggestion, or feedback? Anything you can say. I want to say. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. You can uh, crucify me for my views on the uh, field working. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I am ready to be crucified. <laughs> yes, sir. It was a nice session. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Again. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, I can see someone raising hand in the name of chemist laboratory. So, is there a question you would like? Yeah, to you were very interactive, sir. Please, please interact. Yeah. Chemist, is it uh, Rajpurohit? Uh, chemist laboratory is from Bangladesh, sir. Oh, chemist lab, Bangladesh. Okay. Okay. So uh, maybe they will have more questions when they meet us on the eleventh April. Yeah, right. And uh, <laughs> just for the sake of that, this particular uh, uh, session is live at Facebook. Also, it will be there for always. So anyhow, if you want to attend this session again, you can visit Pharma State uh, uh, Pharma State official Facebook page, and it will be there only. You can watch it as many times as you want. Right. And for any queries, you can write to us academy at the rate pharmacy dot com. We are very much responsive, so you'll get a response as early as. And all the registrants who have registered, uh, they will get certificates also. Uh, we will be sending them very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you for inviting. Thank you. So let us close the session for now. Now, uh, Vivek sir and. Uh, Yes, we had timed it for forty-five sec uh, minutes, but uh, it's a uh, one hour and forty-five minutes, so one almost two hours now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so we close the session here. Thank you, Vivek, sir, for uh, putting a very uh, relevant uh, point in current times. Uh, very strongly, you put it, uh, and uh, there will be obviously few dissents from what you said, but uh, dissents are most uh, welcome. Uh, if you do not have that, uh, um, you are nothing then. Absolutely, right? so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, everyone who joined us, uh, we thank you from our bottom of hearts. We look thank forward. Thank you, to, thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank we look you. forward to interacting with you on Patient Centricity Summit. And if you have any queries to join the workshop uh, by Pharmacist Academy on Digital Toolbox, you are most welcome. Please write to us at academy at the rate pharmacist dot com, or we are there. at many whatsapp groups you can connect with us all right so bye for now see you again on 11th april at patient centricity summit thank you very much thank you very much.